Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at the Gospel Truth. Welcome back. Today is Friday. Weekend is here already. Oh, excuse me. I'm having a really rough morning. I ask for prayers. I'm nauseous. My shoulder hurts. I just don't feel good all over. Yesterday we had a very long drive down to Farmington Hills, about a 40 a 45 minute drive there and then Ryan got his dental work done and then a 45 minute ride back it was rush hour traffic and um then my neighbor called and asked if I could take her to the cardiologist today at 2 30 so I'm going to be taking her to her appointment I think when I get back home I just may have to lay down in bed for a while and relax I did take some stuff for the nausea it hasn't kicked in yet it's an awful feeling to be nauseated, isn't it? But this too shall pass. I think I'm just overly tired. And I know I haven't been eating the right way like I should. I've just been kind of snacking here and there. And that's never good. Sometimes you're just too tired to fix something. And so you just pick and snack. And then you end up not feeling good because you're not getting the nutrients you need. It becomes a vicious cycle. I think maybe that might happen to a lot of seniors when they get older they're hurting they're in pain maybe they just don't have the giddy up and go like they used to have and it's just easier to fix the easy things okay we're back in the master potter when we last um read death had seeken forsaken and now we're going to read about her memories of Grandma Pearl. And when she last left off, Forsaken was saying, I'm so afraid. I don't know what to do. I can't even think straight. Have you ever felt that way? You're not even able to think straight. You just want the world to go away. You want to be left alone. Memories of Grandma Pearl. Memories can benefit us greatly. They can help us and bring to our remembrance the good times and we can build on the bad times and escape them through the, our lord jesus christ and be forgiven which is a very wonderful thing memories of grandma pearl in the midst of the painful darkness and assaulting memory fragments forsaken's heart is suddenly worn by thoughts of grandma pearl after my baby brother was born, Mom didn't have time for me. He was so sick. Thank goodness for Grandma Pearl. It was Grandma Pearl who frequently took her for weeks at a time to her small country cottage when Forsaken's father went on his violent alcoholic binges. She was only seven when Grandma Pearl died unexpectedly. Then she spent large parts of the day roaming the docks to escape her abusive home. In an open vision, Forsaken sees herself as a fragile child in the little white steeple chapel on the outskirts of Comfort Cove, sitting snugly next to Grandma Pearl. Grandma had on her favorite church hat, a gingham bonnet, always freshly starched and pressed with a blue ribbon tied under her chin, which she wore as faithfully as she prayed or read the Bible. The sounds of rich organ music fill the vision as she sees sunlight streaming through the colorful stained glass windows. The aroma of the rustic cedar pews brings Forsaken back to a time long forgotten, a time of sweetness, safety, and innocence. The only places she ever felt safe were here and at Grandma Pearl's. Forsaken's eyes fixed on a golden frame picture of a man on a cross whose body is bruised, beaten, and broken. Forsaken stares, half curious and half repulsed, at the picture. Maybe he would understand my bruises. Did his father do this to him too? Everyone in church seemed to be singing with gusto on that particular Sunday morning, but all forsaken heard in her own little voice, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Holy Spirit's counter invasion. As the vision fades, tears streak down her face. Oh, Grandma, why did you have to leave? I need your help. No one understands me like you do. Holy Spirit comforts her. Gently, softly, he whispers, Remember the picture over the altar? Master Potter also suffered evil at the hands of others so that he could save you out of this field of despair. Cry out to him. 
These revelationary words of truth pierce the darkness with blazing light, challenging the demonic grip on her mind. Death, sensing that he might lose his battle, screams, He never saved you as a child. Why would he save you now? Where was he when your father abused you? Look at you. You're disgusting, broken, and sinful. You're nothing but a used-up, discarded whore. Who would want you? You're too far gone. Don't believe it. No one has ever gone too far. Master Potter looks for the weak and broken vessels to heal. Only Holy Spirit's flaming words of truth illuminate the darkened garbage dump, sending confusion through the lower-ranking demons. They scurry off in fear to avoid the heavenly brightness, finding comforting refuge under the piles of decay and rotting flesh. They screech out an SOS, pleading for the hellish reinforcements to arrive. Enraged at Holy Spirit's life-giving words, death erupts into a fit of blasphemous curses. Yellow-green sulfuric gases explode from his mouth. A whirling swarm, a whirling sound like a swarm of locusts is barely audible in the distance, but rapidly grows to ear-piercing levels. The skies above forsaken turn black, but rapidly grows to ear-piercing levels. The skies above forsaken turn black from a thick black flash of demonic enforcement, reinforcement. Within moments, the moon appears to be dim as it is overshadowed by the churning, pulsing dark cloud. So now the demons are calling reinforcements because the Holy Spirit is speaking with her and trying to convince her that she is of worth, she is of value. Demonic reinforcements. The demonic reinforcements drop from the skies like a downpour. They hit the field and slither toward Forsaken. The archers take careful aim and shoot fiery ar arrows of accusation. Other hurl spear spears or throw poisonous daggers. Angelic warriors, the ground troops, hurry into place, forming a large protective circle with Forsaken in the middle. They face outward. Valiant draws his sword and the tip burst into flame. In moments, his whole being is engulfed by fire, but he is not burned. Our God is a consuming fire, he yells. Extending his sword, he touches the next angel, who immediately ignites into a pillar of fire. The holy fire spreads from angel to angel. These living pillars of light form an impenetrable circular barrier against the wiles of the approaching demons. Death is trapped inside this fiery angelic circle with holy spirit and forsaken. Even though he is cut off from his demonic horde, his focus is undetoured as he tries to capture forsaken soul. Seething rage boils within him as he hears the voice of the Holy Spirit and sees the fiery angels protecting Forsaken. Death vehemently spews to Forsaken. You're mine and you always will be. No one has ever loved you. Holy Spirit continues. Forsaken, Master Potter loved you and will always be there even, even though you did not know it. He wept over your abuse. No one is too far gone for him to save. Death escalates the battle as he brings up painful areas of Forsaken's past. Was he there when you lived on the docks? Was he there when antagonists beat you? Madam treated you better than some invisible god. She's your only family now. You should return to her. Covering her head with her arms, Forsaken cries out in great agony. What should I do? Somebody help me. So she has this warring going inside herself. And she just is in agony and just doesn't, still doesn't know what to do. The Holy Spirit speaks. Holy Spirit tenderly begins to show Forsaken visions of the wonderful plans and destiny for her life. He loves you, Forsaken, and has been waiting for you to come to him. But you have to say yes. Nothing is too hard for him. No one is beyond hope. Suddenly, a memory flashes through her mind, a memory long forgotten. She was a small child playing on the docks with a pack of stray dogs that had come, become her family. Suddenly, a team pulling a milk wagon went out of control. The horses reared up just as an adorable puppy leapt from her arms and dashed into the street. Without thinking, she dashed after him. Looking up at the huge panicking horses, she froze in terror. Unseen by her, Valiant grabbed the team, held their harnesses in each hand, and restrained them long enough for a burly dock worker to swoop her up and carry her to safety to the other side of the road. She knew that day she had escaped sure death, but never realized she was protected by heaven. Another scene fills her mind. She is lying on the floor, bruised and bloodied under antagonist merciless rage. What, 
What she never knew was that he had bragged about killing her that night to his friends at the tavern. She sees Antagonist taking bets over her demise while laughing with his drunken, low-life cronies. She had thought it unusual for him to pass out cold from alcohol right in the midst of a beating. Now she sees the same large angel sitting on his chest, pinning him to the floor. How many times has he saved me, she wonders. As Holy Spirit continues speaking truth, Forsaken's demonic inspired confusion starts to lift. Redeeming love begins to stir deep inside her. Maybe there is hope for me. Maybe Master Potter can heal me. Death, sensing he may lose this battle and be punished and be disgraced before Satan's evil throne, screams in rage at the thought of having to prostrate himself in front of his cruel master, groveling for his life. No, that's a lie. Master Potter destroys broken vessels. He throws them in the mountain of fire. Holy Spirit challenges Forsaken. That voice is a voice of death trying to destroy your life and your future. Master Potter doesn't destroy vessels. He rescues them. Just cry out, Master Potter, save me, and he will, because he loves you deeply and longs for you to come to him. Time is running short, and you're in grave danger. From the depth of hell, the murderous voice of Satan commands death. You fool! She must not come to him. Kill her quickly, or we've lost her soul. Finally, death snatches her into his gnarled talons, and forsaken cries out from the excruciating pain. Master Potter, if, you really, if you're really who my grandma said you are, please save me. Okay, we're going to stop there. When we pick up, we're going to heavens respond to a cry for help. You know, in reading this, we have to really think, how many times has God really saved me from situations? Maybe delayed me from being in a horrific car accident? Kept me from harm and danger all my life that I had no idea? And I'm reminded of a play in our church that was done on stage. A young woman was being taunted by drugs, alcoholism, um, men pulling at her body, wanting her, and all these different things. And Jesus was behind. And they were all pulling her to come with me, come with me, come with me. And finally, when she was down and they were all on top of her, Jesus stepped in, the man that played Jesus, and he went like this, and they all fell down, and he gently grabbed her up, and they danced together, and it was very thought-provoking. I cried. It was a very emotional experience, and that's what God does for us. He picks up the broken pieces. He puts us back together, but we must make that initial first step, and Master Pop, um, Forsaken is now crying out to Master Potter to help her. If, if, if you are who my grandma said you are, help me, save me. So, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I might come back on tomorrow. I'm trying to come on every day. I want to go volunteer tomorrow. If, but if I'm feeling like I'm feeling today, there's no way. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I hope you're enjoying these readings. Would you like them to be a little bit longer? Read a little bit longer? Maybe make it 20 minutes, 25, 30? Um, you let me know. Because I know we just get started, it seems like. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't stop there. And uh, just let me know what you're comfortable with. That will help me out a great deal. All right, I'm going to let you go. I need to get this put up so you can view it today. I hope you have a very blessed weekend, that everything's going well. And if it isn't, that you're seeking out prayer and encouragement where you can. And know that I love you, and I'm praying for you. And I thank you for being a part of the, these studies that I do. It's very enriching to me each day. It helps me keep focused. It keeps me humble. And it keeps me in God's Word. Whatever we need to do to keep us in God's word daily, we need to do that. All right, you take care. I love you. Bye-bye.